Hello, I'm Steve Reynolds and I'm Rick Pott and we're here on behalf of Huron Tractor to help you optimize your S-Series Combine for this year's corn harvest. All right, let's talk about our corn header here. Um, we've got a 712C John Deere Stockmaster corn head um, on this combine, and I'm going to be discussing a few topics to optimize uh, for the corn harvest. First thing I, I want to talk about is deck plates. All right, so we want to make sure we calibrate the deck plates. That's important when you start, and then obviously we can adjust those deck plates from the hydro handle up in the cab. Um, and we want to adjust the deck plate such that we want to minimize trash intake and we want to minimize butt shelling. So butt shelling uh, in corn is basically when some of the bottom kernels on a cob kind of shell off the cob and fall down onto the ground. And uh, an indicator of butt shelling is if you can see kernels all along that row. Okay, so make sure you get out and check. Um, typically, if you've got your deck plates too wide, that promotes butt shelling, okay? And if you've got your deck plates too narrow or tight, that will pr pr promote more trash coming into the combine, all right? So we wanna make sure that's adjusted accordingly um, to balance out, to minimize uh, butt shelling and minimize trash coming into the, the combine. Next, I wanted to talk about back shaft speed. So the back shaft speed, uh, is controlled in the cab, again on the hydro handle, and John Deere combines typically have two systems. They've got a variable pulley design, or they've got a multi-speed, five-speed gearbox, okay, that you can change gears. Um, I like typically running the back shaft speed as low as possible, but that back shaft speed is also dictated on your, or dependent on your harvest speed through the field, right? Because as you go, you want the the header components, the stock rolls and the chains going quick enough to pull that stock straight down and strip that cob off and put it up into the machine, right? Into the header. So that um, back shaft speed is going to be dependent on your harvest travel speed. So I generally like keeping the back shaft speed at 500 to 550 RPM if I could. Um, keeping it slow has uh, make sure all these components are driving slower, okay, and that uh, can prevent grain damage and it's more gentle handling on the cobs as they go into the combine, all right? Um, if you've got components going a little too slow, you might see some flagging, okay, where it kind of drags the stock ahead. Or similarly, if you've got it going a little too quick, it could grab that stock uh, aggressively and cause a little more uh, uh, trash and, and kind of bend it inward, if that makes sense. So set that back shaft speed uh, uh, accordingly to your travel speed and try to keep it low. I like more of a wider header and slower travel speed rather than a narrower header and faster travel speed, just because if we go wider and slower, um, travel speed, we can keep those components slower and that just helps with, uh, helps mitigate green damage and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's just a comment on back shaft speed. The other thing I wanted to comment on is the auger. So the auger here on our header that goes across here, we want to make sure that's down in corn, all right? You can adjust that on either side of the header and for the wider headers, there's a hanger in the center that you can adjust down. John Deere also has an insert kit, okay, that fills that gap underneath that auger um, to eliminate uh, cob damage and, and grain damage that uh, where that auger might scuff the, the cobs, okay? So um, that's an option. And you can also retrofit 600 series heads with those inserts to uh, keep that void filled and eliminate some damage to the, to the cob and kernels. The last thing I wanted to talk about is um, just how you drive in the field on the row. So the key is to keep that row coming in right in the center of the two snouts, right? So that it, the, the stock goes in, it's pulled down, the cob stripped of the stock, strip slash cut of the stock and moved into the machine. Um, we have a product called row Sen Auto Track Row Sense that really helps with that because if you're off the row, you can get stocks moving around kind of aggressively and you can get more trash intake, you can get more uh, butt damage, but you can also get cobs that bounce out of the header, okay? So we wanna make sure we don't have cobs 
bounce out of the header because cobs on the ground and kernels on the ground, that's header loss and we want to reduce that. So driving on the row um, is very important as well. On the combine, we want to talk about our feeder house. First, we want to talk about our faceplate angle. Uh, this can be adjusted um, to compensate for tire sizes or for our rear axle height. This can be adjusted either with the turn, the turn buckle on the top of your feeder house, or if your S-Series has the fore aft adjustment option, it can be adjusted on your hydro handle. Um, we can also adjust this um, backwards um, to keep cobs in the header or to fine tune our, tune our stock processing. Uh, next, we want to talk about our drum height. Um, we want this in the up position, and you change it here on both sides of the feeder house, um, and we want it up so that the, the cobs can flow nicely through the feeder house and it reduces uh, kernel damage. Uh, we also want to talk about our feeder house chain speed, uh, and we can change this by changing the sprocket here. Uh, so from the factory, these S-Series combines come with a 32-26 tooth sprocket. Uh, we recommend changing that sprocket out for a 26-22 tooth sprocket. Uh, that will be uh, that can be used for all crops grown here in Ontario. Uh, and for corn, we want it set to that 22 tooth sprocket uh, to slow it down and be gentler on the kernels and reduce kernel damage. We also want to talk about our feed accelerator setting. Uh, for corn, set your feed accelerator for the, for the slow speed. Uh, to take the ch tensions off the belts, you move this lever and put it down, and then you move it to the correct pulley. Uh, so we recommend running it on the slow speed and we also order these S-Series combines with a slowdown kit. Um, this slows the uh, RPM of that feed accelerator to be more gentle on that corn um, and to have a more even transition into the rotor. Um, like I said, we order all S-Series with this kit, but if, yours, if you want to double check if it has it or if you want to make sure yours has it, uh, contact uh, your service department or your local John Deere dealer. Some other things to check around the feeder house um, is, the, is, the, uh, is the stone trap. Um, make sure that is cleaned out and shut before you go to the field. Also, some S-Series were equipped uh, with shoe auger doors um, that can be opened and shut with a lever above the front axle um, on the right side of the combine. Uh, make sure that is closed uh, before starting your corn harvest. All right, let's talk a little bit about threshing and separating here. So, the, 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 uh, all of our threshing will take place in the concave area, right? And actually, the majority of the separation will too. We want it threshed, corn threshed off the cob, separated and dropped onto that auger bed and moved into the cleaning chute. So we've got round bar concaves installed here for corn. That's what we want. And we want to make sure that those concaves are leveled, meaning that the distance between the threshing element and the concave is the same at the front and the rear of that threshing area or over the concaves, okay? There's a procedure in your operator's manual, make sure you do that. After leveling the concaves, we wanna make sure that it's calibrated and zeroed so that the reading or distance between that threshing element and concave matches the reading that we have in the display. That's very important as we're setting up a concave and our threshing clearance. Um, rotor speed, let's talk a bit about that. So in high moisture corn on S-Series combines, generally you want to be in that 320 to 350 RPM range for high moisture corn. Um, just be aware the default rotor speed settings from John Deere for wet corn are in that 430 to 450 mark and that's a little too high for us, okay? So rotor speed 320 to 350 is generally the range. Um, things to consider in rotor speed. Um, if you have, basically we want it low enough to be gentle on the kernels and prevent grain damage, but high enough to promote good separation and good material movement through that rotor. You want to make sure that happens because if you get a rotor speed that's too low, the material can actually rummage around and stay in the rotor a little too long instead of being thrown outward into the transport veins and indexed or moved along that rotor and moved out. So just keep that in mind when you're setting a rotor speed. The next we'll talk a little bit about our concave clearance. Okay. I usually, um, in a field, I'll look at the diameter of the shelled cob as a good starting point. Okay. Personally, I add about two or three millimeters to that and generally I arrive at about 33 on my concave clearance. Okay. And adjust accordingly. Um, and with concave clearance, if you have it open too much, you can lose control of the cob and that material and end up uh, creating a little more um, 
cob da damage or, or busted up cob, which maybe we don't want. If you adjust it too tight, you can end up splitting the cob, again, getting more cob uh, debris that you're just gonna have to uh, clean out in your shoe. And again, those two situations are, are over threshing situations where we're creating more excess material that we have to clean out, which we don't want. You just want that sweet spot so that it's actually indexing or rolling over that cob, keeping control of the cob, threshing off all those kernels and moving those cobs, kind of rolling them and moving them through the uh, threshing area and through the separator and out. So that's a bit of a, a conversation on that. Um, threshing is, ex is very important. So after you set your feeding out front in the header, you gotta make sure that your threshing is set right. But even before you look at the grain sample, all right? How do you do this? Well, one way, uh, there's a couple ways. One way, put your uh, um, chopper up, okay? Run a little bit in the field and check the conditions of the cob coming out. Um, is there kernels still left on the cob? Are the cobs split lengthways, meaning the concave maybe is a little too tight? Um, is there too much cob bust out, you know, and debris? Or is there nice chunks of cob uh, coming out? Ideally, you want full cobs coming out, but it goes through the discharge beaters, so that's going to bust up cobs a little bit, so it won't be perfect. But you can tell, the con you can tell your threshing by the condition of your cobs coming out the, the back of the combine. You can also do a power shutdown, okay? The process is in your operator's manual or on the Go Harvest app for your phone and basically stop the, uh, the machine and the separator. Um, you don't have to stop the engine. The, you see there's a new procedure for that, which is good. Um, and you can see the material in here and see if you're threshing correctly because we got to set threshing first, then we can look at our cleaning. So that's a bit of a comment on, on the threshing. Also, try to keep the rotor full. Grain on grain threshing is always desired. Okay, next let's talk about the separator area. Very important for corn are these spacers. So there's spacers in here that give more clearance before, between the separator tines and the separator grates. And what that does is allow cobs to roll through. If those separator spacers aren't, separator grate spacers aren't in, then uh, it will be tight and you'll get cob in the bin. So make sure those separator grate spacers in, are installed. All right. One last thing while I'm in this area, you got the gear shift over here for your rotor speeds. We want it in low or position one um, for corn. Okay, let's talk about cleaning and the cleaning shoe more specifically right now. Um, the deep tooth sieve and chaffer are optimal for corn. Okay, so those of you changing over from a general purpose sieve and chaffer in the previous crops to a deep tooth sieve and chaffer for corn, um, make sure you get that that installed. And you can use a deep two sieve and chaffer for soybeans if you're going back and forth. So that's fine. Now, what's also important is to calibrate the sieve and chaffer so that we know that the reading on the display is the same as the physical reading down in the shoe. Okay, so get that calibrated. You will need, on the S700s, you will need to go into tech mode. So to contact service to understand how to get into that mode. All right. Um, settings. So I usually run with my fan at 1350, so 1350 RPM on the fan. We want a large air volume pushing, having that initial blast of corn over the front chaffer to break it up, stratify it and suspend it through the shoe to get cleaning, okay? So open that fan right up. Um, chaffer I usually set to about 18 and the sieve to 12 for those settings. The dual zone chaffer part right at the back, I want that closed completely, okay? Um, so those are the settings I recommend and generally have, uh, have good luck with um, when you're cleaning corn. We don't want a lot of tailings. There should be hardly any tailings uh, when you're doing corn, okay? Um, so generally leave that sieve set where it should be and, and try not to shut it down because A, tailings put grain right around and cause grain damage and also it affects the airflow. We want to keep that airflow moving through so we get good cleaning capabilities. So, so try not to shut down that sieve when you're doing corn, okay? A um, couple other settings I'll talk about right now. If you have an active tailing system on a class eight or class nine combine, you want to put it to the corn setting. That's up here. And further back, it's actually kind of part of the chopper, is the crop diverter. 
and we want to make sure we've got the crop diverter set to corn here. And what that does is it puts a plate down to prevent cobs coming back around from the chopper and hitting our chaffer. It can do extreme damage to our chaffer if that crop diverter isn't set down. Finally, we want to talk about residue management. Uh, three important things, uh, three important settings for corn for residue. We want to make sure we have our knives out. Um, we want to make sure we have our chopper speed set to low uh, by pushing this T-handle all the way in. Um, we also want to make sure we have our, uh, our spinners set accordingly and we can change that uh, up in the cab depending on our header width. Um, for those of you who have premium residue equipped on your S-series combines uh, like this one here, we want to make sure we have our overshot beater cover on in here. Um, that's important to so make sure cob cobs don't get flung um, towards the chaffer and damage that chaffer. Um, we also want to make sure we have our, our corn paddle kit on our fingers there to not, to not damage those fingers on the, on the um, spreaders. All right, as we conclude this corn optimization video, we've got a few concluding remarks. Uh, before starting our corn harvest, we want to make sure we've done our, all our calibrations. Um, when hooking up to a new header, we want to make sure we've done our feeder house raised lower speed calibration, our header, uh, our header calibration, and our deck plate spacing calibration. On the combine, we also want to make sure we've done our moisture sensor temp temperature calibration and our mass flow vibration calibration. All right, thanks, Rick. Um, I'd also like to draw your attention to John Deere's Go Harvest YouTube channel. There's some excellent videos on there that uh, show how combines work. Specifically, there's four videos on harvesting corn. I highly recommend. And then there's also um, videos on yield calibration, uh, auto maintain, and all sorts of other features uh, that John Deere combines have to offer. Also on here on Tractor website, we've got a host of uh, YouTube videos of interest, um, including some other combine optimization videos. Uh, two that I'll specifically call out is the GS3 display setup for combines and the Gen 4 display setup for combines. So please check those out. They also show locations of where to do calibrations, etc., and uh, I'm sure they'll be useful. So, with that, last but not least, most importantly, have a safe corn harvest, and all of us here in Tractor hope you have a successful corn harvest this fall. Thank you.